Uh, hi, I'm Louis Rosenberg, Chief Scientist of Unanimous AI, but today I'm not going to be talking about artificial intelligence. Instead, I was invited to talk about a project I did 30 years ago at U.S. Air Force Research Laboratories, uh, a project called the Virtual Fixtures Platform, uh, which created the very first uh, functional augmented reality system uh, capable of combining the real world and the virtual world into a single interactive environment with sight, sound, and touch in full 3D space. And so the title of my talk today is Augmented Reality Reflections After 30 Years. And so uh, let's jump back in time to, uh, to those early days uh, at the time of the, the start of the Virtual Fixtures Project. Uh, back then, virtual reality already existed. Uh, it phrase was coined around 1987, and by the early 90s, uh, there were uh, really uh, basic head-mounted displays, virtual reality gloves, uh, hand trackers, head trackers, certainly not as sophisticated as today, but the basic pieces were there. Um, augmented reality, the phrase didn't even exist yet. There were precursor technologies. Uh, Heads-up displays existed. Uh, it was developed also uh, at the Air Force primarily for uh, for fighter pilots to, uh, to give uh, information displayed uh, while they were flying. It was primarily textual information, and really it was annotation. You really couldn't call it augmentation. Really didn't create a, a, a reality that combined the real world and the virtual world. Uh, there were also uh, some see-through displays, which were basically head-mounted displays where uh, the back was taken off and, and half-silvered mirrors were used. And so you could basically see the real world through uh, the virtual world. It wasn't uh, registering the real world with the virtual world, it interact. Uh, back then, I was a, a graduate researcher uh, at Stanford and at NASA Ames Research Center, and, and both places were developing some of the very first vision systems, gloves, 3D audio systems. And I was fortunate enough to, to do research on some of the early vision systems studying how to model interocular distance for stereoscopic 3D. Um, this meant I spent countless hours in uh, virtual reality. And at that time, the graphics were crude, the head tracking had lag, the fidelity was low. Uh, but those really weren't the issues that bugged me uh, because I knew that the technology would get better. What, what, what bugged me spending all those hours was how isolated and enclosed it felt uh, in this virtual reality, like the world got smaller instead of larger. And what I really wanted was to be able to take the power of virtual reality and just splash it all over the real world, uh, allow people to interact with real and virtual objects together as a single seamless mixed reality. And, and so uh, I proposed uh, the Virtual Fixtures Project, which was to create virtual overlays on the real world that would look and feel and sound uh, like part of the real reality you experience. And to make it concrete, uh, I gave a very specific application, which was for medical. And, uh, and the idea was actually for surgeons, to be able to have surgeons combine uh, their real manual dexterity with virtual augmented overlays that uh, they could experience at, at the same time. And, and the concept was, was really this. If I'm a surgeon and I'm performing, let's say, an incision, uh, I'm using a lot of mental effort to make that incision. I can reduce the mental effort and increase my accuracy by giving you a fixture. For example, a straight edge. A straight edge uh, could allow me to make an incision faster and more accurate with less uh, mental burden. Problem with a, a straight edge is it's limited by the real world. Uh, it, it, I can't sink it down into the patient's body. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it's constrained by how it's manufactured. But imagine if you could have virtual fixtures in augmented reality where I could actually overlay a virtual fixture that could guide, a pa guide the doctor to perform an incision um, and actually enhance their performance just as much as if it, as if it was a real fixture but now have the benefits of virtual reality where I can actually sink it into the patient and allow the doctor to interact with the real body and the virtual fixtures. And so that was the concept. The concept was pitched uh, to the Air Force, to, to Air Force Research Laboratories. Uh, I also got support from uh, the Center for Design Research at Stanford and NASA Ames Research Center. In uh, Here's a picture from 1992 that's actually 
me in 1992, uh, before my hair uh, was gray, and I am uh, in the virtual fixtures system. There was this exoskeleton that would, uh, that would track body motion, and, um, and the idea was that a person could see and experience and interact with the real world while also creating uh, virtual fixtures that they could interact with that were registered in three-dimensional space. And a key part of this project was to then measure human performance and see if virtual fixtures could enhance, could amplify their, their performance through this mixed reality. And so um, to measure performance, we, we had a task board. And this task board uh, was really very simple in what the participants had to do. They would uh, grab a peg and move it from one hole to another hole as quickly as they could. This is actually called a Fitz Law peg insertion task uh, because there's been lots of prior research that shows that you can actually measure uh, human performance and the amount of workload or overload on a person by how they move a peg between a hole, uh, how quickly they can do the task. And so um, basically uh, people who would go into this virtual fixture system would, would perform the task either directly uh, on the, from the peg and the hole or remotely, we had uh, remote robots control the task in a telepresence environment as well. And then we would overlay virtual fixtures into their environment and see if the virtual fixtures could enhance their performance. In, in this case, the virtual fixture was a cone. And so that when they were moving the peg from a hole to another hole, a virtual cone that they could literally feel, they could feel it and guide their hand in and, and enhance their performance. Uh, 1991, 1992, we looked at direct performance of people performing this peg and assertion task with simple virtual fixtures. Um, and these were rigid fixtures, uh, rigid surfaces, rigid cones. Uh, 1992, 1993, we looked at a telepresence with time delay. And then uh, 93, 94, uh, looked at more complex virtual fixtures, not just rigid, sur rigid surfaces, but compliant surfaces. Uh, simulated viscous liquids, uh, magnetic surfaces where it would feel like you could stick to the surface or move. The idea was to really take advantage of the virtual nature of these fixtures and then overlay them onto this real world task to enhance performance. And, uh, and we showed for the first time that this really worked, that we could enhance performance significantly by uh, bringing these virtual uh, augmented reality uh, experiences into the real world in a very rigorous and significant way. And so uh, that's a quick review uh, of um, the Virtual Fixtures Project uh, 30 years ago in uh, augmented reality.